Good evening, everyone. This is Robert RJL 5 Wing Network welcoming you back to uh, the continuation of our patrol from last night. This is World War II U boat leader, the battle for the North Atlantic. We are continuing our short patrol called The Battle Begins, which takes place September 1939 to May 1940. It is a short patrol, three U boats, and the tonight is part two. I'm pretty sure we will finish uh, this patrol tonight, no problems. So this could be a short video, but that is all right. Uh, come, far, for you, far be it from me to know not how to play this game. Um, one thing I should clarify is the rules on torpedoes. When you fire torpedoes, it is not each torpedo, it is not the resolution of the of each die roll. It's the highest die roll. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example that I've already messed up the rules in the first game. I shouldn't make that mistake again. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we're going up against, once again, the uh, HMS Astronomer, the ship that got away. When you fire torpedoes, you take... You go ahead and you you get you, you add the U-boat TS modifier. You subtract one for each range. You add a number minus one. How many you spread you spread in the fire? And you take the highest die roll, uh, the highest modified die roll, and that tells you what you've done to the ship. It's not like four torpedo. It's not like you fire four. Let's say I fire four torpedoes and all hit, two miss, or something like that. I'll give you an example. So let's say we were playing the HMS Astronomer, and let's say our submarine was, let's say the submarine was uh, was one was was one hex away. Brian Patterson joins us, and one hex away, and the, and the freighter is in the convoy areas one hex away. Let's say I go ahead and fire a spread of four torpedoes from uh, for the heck of it, U forty seven. Now U forty seven, what you do is you add his torpedo skill, which is plus one. Okay, you are, so you add plus one, minus one per range. So let's say minus one is, so you're one away, so that's zero. And let's say we fire four torpedoes. The four torpedoes is you plus the number of torpedoes minus one, which would be three. So it would be plus three to the highest die roll, not to every torpedo. That's what I did the last run. So if we rolled... Four torpedoes, Mark Russell joins us here. So if I was to roll four torpedoes at the astronomer, let's say this is our roll. So two, three, four, and eight. So you add, let's say we add three. So three is added to five. So this becomes five. This becomes six. That becomes 10. And that becomes, and that becomes 11. You only take the highest die roll. So in this case, you only take the eleven, and then you look at the torpedo. Then you look at the result on the ship to see what you do to it. Now, let's say these die this dice was like, uh, let's say a five, uh, a one, and let's say a six. So then we add three. Well, this becomes a this becomes a four. That becomes a five. That becomes an eight, and that becomes a nine. The nine is the highest roll you take, and you check the damage, and you see that it would be only heavy damage. We wouldn't sink this ship that way. Even though the others do hit, you only take the highest die roll, and that tells you what kind of damage you do to the ship, to the enemy ship. Now, if you have if you have a tie in dice, okay, they both count. So that's how that works, and I'll show you how we do it this time. So I'm going to keep the original results for now. It doesn't make doesn't make sense to go over it again but that is how you do attacks on merchant shipping so of course my dumb butt wouldn't know how to play the game right and it's not that nobody told me I, nobody told me I did it wrong I went to the rule book and realized okay I didn't do it right but good to have everybody here for the second part of the uh, battle begins September 1939 to May 1940s we continue our German patrol into the Battle of the Atlantic this is a short patrol, and right now we are showing uh, a total of 11 victory points from the three submarines so far. So right now we're at a poor, uh, we're at a poor evaluation. We want to get to at least adequate, maybe get good if we can. 
So let's see how this goes. So we're going to continue this patrol. As we already know that yesterday we went into, the, went into there and we had a few battles, okay, into the, against some merchants and some escorts. So now let's see what happens. So we're going to go back to, we continue, we now go back to the strategic phase. We go back to the strategic, the strategic segment. And we actually still have uh, operations points to use to try to, uh, to try to go ahead and get some victory points. So we can expend special option points to see if we can, um, you know, maybe do a mission like a mine mission or a special attack or something like that. We're not going to use that. But what we are going to use, what I think we're going to use here. Let's see how we do this. So let's see. Actually, you know, we'll keep it. A, we'll just keep it as it is. So, no strategic rules. So, we're going to go right into the operations segment. Tony's board life joins us here. Good to have you here, Tony. And always an honor when you join when you join my chat, sir. One of the best one of the best board gaming uh, channels you'll find is Tony Board's Life or Rough uh, Rough Swords uh, Rough Swordsman Wargamer, and of course, ID Jester. He is not in the chat at the moment, but he is an awesome wargamer. So, we have some more gamers in here. As I continue some more World War II action. So let's get back into this now. So let's see now if we play this game right. So let's see. So we're going to start here with U-43. He's in the Western Approaches. And we're going to patrol. So we're patrolling now. So we only draw one event card. We're not moving. We're going to patrol here and see what we can find. So we draw an event card. And it is clear weather, no effect. So nothing happens. Uh, nothing happens in that. In that. So now we go ahead and we now search for contacts. Well, actually, before, actually, before that, we go to the British Isles to see what he's going to do. And he's going to stay in, because uh, you, you do all three, you do all your submarines in the segment before you move on to the next one. So the British Isles, we have U-44, and that was the Type 9 U-boat. And he's patrolling here, and he's got two event cards he has to pull. So let's see. So the first event card. Allied submarine attack. Oh boy, roll a die. Add evasion. Add evasion rating. Okay, so we roll a die here, and we add his evasion rating. He has only got one stress. His evasion rating is a four. So let's see what happens here. So we roll. A, so it's going to be four plus one, which is five, and it says add two stress. If the U-boat is unfit, sink the boat. Well, it's not unfit. We add two stress, and that is what happens there. So this one now becomes a three. So this one now becomes a three, and we roll a second. We take a second event card, and it says rough seas add one stress to this U boat. So U forty four got a little stressed out. He's now at four, and he is still okay. That's a train crew, so you can see that he is still in zero to seven, so he's still okay. So this U-boat is still fine, and now he's ready to uh, find some contacts. We go to Gunther Prane in U-47, which, of course, as you know, he was a U-boat ace and one of the best uh, U-boat captains Germany had at that time. And he's in the North Sea, and he's patrolling, so he draws two event cards. So the first one, stormy weather, end U-boat's movement for the step. Okay, well, we know he's not moving, so this doesn't mean anything to us. We still draw on another event card. Lone Merchant. If the U-boat is not unfit, it may expend any one torpedo to gain one victory point. And we will do that. So we, we, use it, we remove a torpedo, which will bring that down to one. It can be from the ready stores, and, we get, and he gets a victory point. So another victory point for U-boat ace Gunther Prane. As you know, this is early in our World War II leader series, so we'll be playing the Axis powers for quite a while um, before we even think about getting to the Allied power. So lots of Tiger leader, lots of U-boat leader before our first, before we go into zero leader, and that is right now, zero leader is at this time uh, the, the, the opening leader series of for the Axis in the Pacific War. So right now we'll be sticking with Germany for a while, then a little Japan, and then finally you'll see Corsair leader, uh, Sherman leader, um, you know B seventeen flying fortress leader, and of course and uh, and so and uh, 
and, 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 so, and Gato leader and so on. We got a long way to go. But we're still here in the early months of, uh, of uh, World War II. Okay, so all the units have moved. He's patrolled twice. So now we go to the tactical segment. And now we see if we find some contacts. So we go back to U-43 since the first. Now, his has four stress. And he can go to six stress. So he's still okay. This will probably be the final uh, 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 patrolling for these guys before they try to get back into uh, port. So we'll find out where we're at. So U-43 is in the Western Approaches. And he has, he's got, uh, we rolled to see how many contacts he finds here. Now, of course, at the end, when all, play, when all su uh, submarines are in the search box, the map is wiped clean of, of uh, is wiped clean of any uh, markers. So warning markers, that kind of thing is all wiped clean. It starts a fresh board. So U-43, he has, oh, we rolled a 10. He's got three contacts here. And the Western approaches. So let's see what we find. So we got three contacts. Oh boy. All right. So we're going to put a battle location marker here. And we start with three contacts. So there are three contacts we can we can find and see what we do. So contact number one, we before we'll draw a convoy card. And we have three merchants and three escorts. Uh, three escorts and three merchants. He's got only four stress. I'd really rather go after lone, es lone merchants or at least well, with one escort I can deal with. So I'm going to decline that one. So we can decline it. So now there are two contacts remaining. So we draw another convoy card. And, we, oh, we got naval units here. We got three naval units and three escorts. We're not ready to take on naval units. Early in the war, so we will decline that. So now we're down to one contact left. And the last convoy card is four merchants and one escort. This is something I think we can go after. One escort and four merchants. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go after these guys. So we will go after them. So let's see what we got. So there are So we have four merchants on the board. We got to find out of course what they are depending on what we want to take out. And one escort, we're not sure yet what the escort is. So we found four merchants and one lone escort. So this is actually a pretty good uh, way to go attack. And he's got six ready torpedoes. So let's see what we do here. And the only thing about it is with only one contact, that means that we can we got to do as much damage as possible. Then get, then get pretty much we're not going to be able to do any more damage. So this one sub is not going to be able to sink this entire convoy. So we want to go after what we uh, think we can go after here. So let's see what he does here. So after that, go to the contact phase. And he actually had the searcher ability, but it didn't help. It was still a three, it was still three anyway. And let's see. And let me see what we got here. Okay. So let's let's see what we got to do here. So our U-boat is U-43, and we're going to put him, where are we going to put him? Let's see. Let's put him over. I'm going to put him over here, and he's going to be submerged, obviously. So he's going to be submerged, as we're, and Steeler Fan joins us here in the Battle of the Atlantic. So I'm going to put him here. 
and he'll be submerged in the long range. And now we'll find out what we got. So now after we put them, now we got to find out and see if there's anything special. So now we draw another convoy card and we refer to the refer to this list out. It says, oh, boy, lookouts. Add one to escort detection die rolls. OK, so this escort's got some good lookouts on them. So we got to be careful with this escort. So I'll go ahead and put that there. So I know we got to add one to escort detection rolls. All right. So now we enter the combat phase and we got movement. So the first thing we're going to do is movement. And I want to stay away from this escort if possible. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do one movement. I'm going to move here. I'm going to move here, I think, in the medium range. And he's about two hex he's two X's away from me. Two X's, I X's, two C areas, really. So we're going to move into medium range, and now from here, we can see uh, what we're facing, at least on this side. So by moving here, we can tell what these two merchants and the escort is. So we're still too far away for these two, but we can find out what he is. So this guy is going to be a British Endeavor class small tanker. He's 5,000 tons, speed of two. So this is the British Endeavor. So let me find him here. Here we go. So British Endeavor. And let's see here. Uh, one, two. We can see, we can still see, we can still see this one here because we're over here. So one, two. Let's see what this merchant is. And this is a Braza class. Cargo liner. This could be something worth sinking. A Brazo class cargo liner, 10,000 tons. He's worth two victory points and two experience points. He can he's hard to sink though. 5, 8, 11. He's hard to sink. And now we see what the escort is. And the escort is uh daring class HMS Daring Class Destroyer. It is a full-blown destroyer, speed of three. And he got good detection rating, a uh, detection rating of four or six. So this is the destroyer we got to deal with. So, and he's going to add to his detection rolls. So his rolls become a five and a seven. So this is the daring is what's in charge here. So let's find him. And where he may be. There he is. We don't know who these two are yet because they're too far away. And the Braza. So we get the Braza here. There. And we're set to go. So we have a British Endeavor class tanker and the Braza class cargo liner and HMS Daring class destroyer. Okay. So we did our movement. Now we do lag. Now we do lag. And these both these guys are moving at speeds of two. Of course, the destroyer is moving at a speed of three. Is moving at a speed of three. So let's see. I think you take the. I think you move in the lag. Let me see here. Pick a merchant or naval ship on the tactical display with the highest speed. So you use a merchant or naval, not an escort. The escort doesn't move. The escort doesn't do anything. The escort doesn't ma doesn't make the move. So we're one speed lower than the two ships. So we're going to move back. We're going to move back. And so we're going to move. I'm going to say we're going to move right about here. So that lag will move us into here, and now we actually, and by moving here in, into here, or actually, no, I don't think we move closer. I think we move here instead. You know what? We're going to move here. So we move here instead with the lag. So we move down, and we're going to get a shot here at the Braza, and that's the one we want to, we want to go after the Braza. The Braza, the Braza is a 10,000-ton cargo liner. That's the ship we want to put to put to bed. 
We're still out of range here. So now the escorts trying to try to detect. So now we want to see what the, see if the daring can find us. We're submerged. So an escort checks for detection of U-boats for it moves. An escort checks for detection against each surface U-boat at a range of zero, one, or two areas, and against submerged U-boat at a range of zero or one. Well, we're too far away from the daring, so he can't find us. But we got to see where he goes. So we roll a ten-sided die to see where he goes. So, let's see who removes. And it is a four. So the four, if the die roll is four or seven, the escort in, if the die roll is four or seven, the escort in the short range area does not move. So he stays put up here, which is good for us because he would have to get closer to us. So the the escort, the daring is staying right where he's at. So right now, nobody knows that U forty three is in the area. Since we're three hexes, we're three, we're one, two, three, we're three hexes away from us. He can't find us right now. He has to, a submerged U boat, he has to be two areas away. Less than two areas. So he stays put. He's in the short range area. So now we go to aggressive U boats, which we don't, which we don't have. We go to the enemy attacks, but the enemy isn't attacking. They don't even know where we're here. So we go to us. So it is our turn. For a for it is our turn to try to sink the Braza. Um, I would love to see if I can hit the British Endeavor as well. Um, we're gonna go ahead, but the Braza is a very nice, tasty as a very nice, tasty, uh, very nice, tasty ship. Ten thousand tons, we get two victory points for it. So, U forty three has uh, six. He has six torpedoes. And he has he adds nothing to the torpedo skill. Adds nothing to torpedo skills. So we're gonna fire four at the Braza and two at the British Endeavor and see if we can get some damage on it. So we're gonna fire two four torpedoes at the Braza and two at the Endeavor. So let's do this. So the first thing we get the first thing we check. So the first one thing we check is the range. So plus the U-boat uh, torpedo skill modifier, which is zero. He doesn't have any. So it state, so it's die roll. Then minus one per range. We are two spaces away from it. And then plus the number fired minus one. So we actually get, so it's going to be, um, let's see. So we get... So we're two hexes away from it. So it is zero minus two plus three because we're going to fire a spread of four, and and then you sub and then minus plus. So wait, so wait, so plus three. So it's plus one. Hold on a minute. Let me hold, let me let me think about this for a second. I forget about the range. So minus one per range. So it's minus two plus three. So it's plus one. So it's a plus one to each die roll if we fire four torpedoes at the Braza. I could unleash all six at it to make sure I maybe sink the sucker. And maybe we can do that. The only problem is by doing that, um, if the if I think maybe what we got to do is get the attack on the Braza and just get out of here. And just get out of here. Be happy to sink a ship. It's two victory points, and right now this is not too bad. So we're going to attack the Braza, and I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire the four. I'm, and in order to sink it, I have to hit an eleven. I have to get eleven. So actually, I need at least one ten on four dice. You know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to fire a spread of five at the Braza and one at the British Endeavor, and hope for. And hope for something. The British Endeavor only needs a seven to sink. I'm sorry, it needs an eight to sink. So, or should I just unload them all at the Braza? Uh, let's see. We want to make sure we sink that thing. That's a 10,000 ton cargo liner. It's worth two victory points. The Endeavor is only worth one. I think you have to go, I think we have to sink the Braza. We're going to fire all six into it. So, we're going to fire all six torpedoes into the Braza. I have four dice, but if you're wondering, I do have more. So we're going to fire all six into the Braza. 
We see it's a beautiful, it's a 10,000 ton ship, and that is a good ship to have. So again, we do here the U torpedo attack plus one plus the torpedo strength modifier, which is zero because he doesn't is zero because he doesn't have any. He doesn't have any. Minus one per range, so it's minus two right now. Plus the number fired, so six minus one is five. Okay, so now it's a plus three. So it's going to be plus three on each of these on these dice, and you take the highest roll that you get, and that decides what you do to the ship. So we need plus three. On the Braza, and an 11 will sink it. We need we need eight. One eight will sink this ship. We need eight. So fire all torpedoes at this sucker. And we got and we blew it right out of the water. Because these are because the zeros are tens. So ten, we blew this right out of the water. So we launched all the torpedoes out of it. So this is 10 becomes 13, 13, 13. We absolutely blew it out of the water. It had no chance. Boom! It is out of there. So the Braza goes down very fast. Very, very fast. The ship went down very quickly. So the Braza sunk. And we're going to get, and that's for U-43. So we get two victory points and two experience points for that as well. So we sink the Braza. It went bye-bye. It went bye-bye. So I sunk the ship I wanted. Now we want to get the heck out of here. Now we just want to get the heck out of here. So, so after the caution, then we go to... Uh, we go back. So after the cautious U-boats fire, we then go back to submarine movement. We're going to move submarine movement. So you do submarine movement. What we're going to do here is we're going to flip to surface side, which gives us a speed of two, and we go one, two, and we immediately get out. It's pretty much what you do because you move. You want you, once you move. The rules is once you get off. Once you move off the the, uh, the convoy wake, the battle the battle is over. So it was a hit and run attack. So we sank the cargo, we sank the cargo liner and then got the heck out of Dodge. I want to be sure I did that right, but I'm pretty sure I did. So at okay, so the post. If there are no U-boats or ships on the combat tactical display, go to the post-combat resolution phase. So he is done. And he's going to go into the searched area because there's no more contacts. So I cannot re-engage this. So you add one stress point. So his stress point is now a five because it compete because we did go into the attack. So you add a stress point. You reload the torpedoes. So we had we fired all six. So now there were seven torpedoes left uh, in ready. So we load. So there are seven torpedoes. So there are six torpedoes now into into ready, and one torpedo left. That's stored. And that's not too bad. You sunk a ship. The, th the truth of the matter is, unless, now, if we were had a wolf pack, we have a very good chance to maybe sink the whole convoy. It was very rare that one submarine would sink an entire convoy. Very, very rare. And I know it did, it did happen, but it was a, a small convoy. A convoy like this, you're happy to get one ship sunk and then get the heck out of there. Save your submarine and fight another day. So record the experience points, record the victory points, and we are done. So these guys do get away, whatever they were. But we did well here as we sank a ship. That's the goal of this game, sink the ship. Sinking escorts are cool, but remember... Merchant ships were always the number one target, and the same went for the United States in their silent service war as well. And we are down to no contacts left, and he now goes into the search box, and he is done.
and he is done. So we're done with him. We now move on to U44 in the British Isles. So let's see what um, let's see what he does here. So he's got some contacts. U44 has nothing special on him. So let's see what he can do. So he's got we roll a die to see how he finds any contacts in the British Isles. He's already patrolled. It is a five. He finds one contact. So there's one contact here in the British Isles. And we got to find out what the contact was. Now, remember, of course, we had the lookouts add one to escort detection rules, but that didn't even come into play. So we draw a convoy card to see, and it is, oh, look at that, two lone merchants again. There you go. Well, of course, we'll, of course, engage those. And by the way, of course, a warning marker went up here at the Western Approaches. And now the battle location goes to the British Isles. So we got, again, two lone merchants. Remember, early in the war, not every merchant was usually escorted uh, by, by we escort. So we got two merchants. So let's see what we find. We'll see what we got. Two lone merchants. And U44 is going to come up. I think what we'll do here is... Let's see. We don't know yet what we're facing. Um, we're going to go ahead and stay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to come up surfaced. Right in front of them in the convoy course as we're going to head off these two merchant ships. Now we draw another convoy, another convoy card to see if there's anything special on the bottom. And heavy fog, end combat at the end of the second combat resolution phase. Ugh. So that means we got we can only go through two comp two set combat resolution phases, and the combat ends. This is an event card, so and that's a convoy card. Put that there, and I don't know what it was. I'll just shuffle it real quick. We're down to one convoy card, which I'll go ahead and reshuffle them as soon as I can. So we end combat at the end of the resolution phase. Okay, and the second combat resolution phase. All right, so we got some heavy fog. So it's a little foggy out there today in the, in the British Isles in the North Atlantic. Okay, so we got to move. Um... Now, one thing I also did not do, what I did not do correctly in the last time I did this, was the attacks from the merchant ships. Merchant ships attack, but if the but if the submarine has a high enough evasion rating, okay, it the attacks can be ignored. So some of the attacks that occurred on the other U-boat that I had didn't have to do that because it would have ignored them. But let's see what we got here. So this is U-44. He has an evasion rating of four. He's got six ready torpedoes. So we got to move. Um, I'm going to go right at these guys. I'm going to go right at these guys. We're going to go one, two, and we're going to stay surfaced. There are no escorts. We don't have to worry about any escorts. There is no lag because we're moving at the same speed. So we're at the same speed. There's no lag. Okay. So now we go to uh, a, so now we go to attack. But first we got to find out what these are. So let's see what this one is. This one is the Caddo, a large a Caddo class large tanker, ten thousand tons. That's a good uh, one to have there. So that is the Caddo. Here he is. This one is a Tudor class medium freighter, 6,000 tons, speed to um, victory point one, one, and one surface. So this is a Tudor class medium, Tudor class medium freighter. So a large tanker and a medium freighter are 
by themselves here in the British Isles. Not too smart. But then again, early stages of the Battle of the Atlantic, and they really did not play. Uh, the, the, it was a very, it was a, it was a, it was very, e pretty easy for the Germans, uh, for the German Kriegsmarine to go ahead and uh, do the damage uh, to enemy shipping that time. So this is the this is the tutor. And he is he is here. So we have the Caddo and the Tudor. We got two uh merchants. I think the tankers, we definitely want to take the tanker out. He's worth two victory points. It'd be nice to take the tutor out as well. I could use the gun on the, I could use torpedoes and the gun on the tutor and fire four torpedoes at the, at the Caddo. Can you fire a spread of torpedoes and fire the deck gun? Yes, you can. If you're surfaced, which we are, we can fire torpedoes and the gun in the same turn. So yes, I want to use the torpedoes on the tanker. I'm going to use two torpedoes and the gun on the tutor. Since there are no escorts, all right, and these guys have, now I'll show you what I mean by their attack ability. The Tudor and the Caddo have surface one light damage. Now, one light damage doesn't mean automatic damage from these guys. It depends on a sub's evasion. And U44, has a, he, his stress is four, but his stress is seven. He's okay. His evasion is a four. So what you said, so what the rules are, the rules are, okay, that attack resolution, it's minus one light hit attack modifiers. The attack number on the enemy ship card specifies the number and type of hit counters drawn. This number is modified as shown below. Attack modifiers, minus, minus one light hit for every two U-boat evasion rating round down. So that means that the Caddo, so it's right now it's their turn to its their enemy attack. So the Caddo here has one light, but the sub's evasion is a four. So that's minus one light hit. That's ignored. The Tudor also has surface one light, but the evasion rating is four. So that is ignored. So that is ignored. So pretty much the sub is moving all over the place, and the one light hit, it doesn't matter here. Okay, so that is ignored when it's surfaced. So these two, these two merchants can't do anything to this submarine. At the same time, yes, you can. I believe, I, believe you do the, I believe you do the torpedoes first and then the gun. So let's see what we can do here. I do, it does say only surface U-boats can provide gun attacks. Gun attacks can be made out to a range of two. A surface U-boat can perform a gun attack and attack with torpedoes during the same turn. Declare all attacks before rolling for any. So you can do them at the same time, yes. So these two uh, small freight, these two ships can't do anything to the submarine. So the submarine pretty much ha can do whatever it wants. We're going to fire four torpedoes into the Caddo and two torpedoes and fire the gun at the Tudor. Remember, we only have, um, we have two resolution phases. To try to sink, to try to sink possibly both these things. I'm counting on the torpedoes to sink the Caddo, and I'm counting on the gun and uh, maybe using a second gun attack on the Tudor to sink it. So let's see what we got. So U44, it is now time for him. It's cautious U boats. So it is now his first turn. So we fire four torpedoes at the Caddo, plus the U boat torpedo strength modifier. And he has, let's see, he has a plus one. As you can see here, he has a plus one. So is a plus one torpedo strength modifier. We are, we are, we are one space away from each one. So it's plus one minus one per range. So it's zero. And we're firing four torpedoes into the Caddo which is four minus one is three. So we're going to get plus three to each dice on the Caddo. In order to sink it, we need a 10 to sink it. So we pretty much need set a seven or higher on one of these dice will sink the Caddo. 
So we'll perform the first attack on the cattle. So we need sevens to sink this thing. Fire away. Shroom. And we got it. That's a nine. You take the only the highest die. So nine plus three is 12. The Caddo is torpedo score is a 10, as you can see here, is a 10. So the four torpedoes strike the Caddo amidships, and it goes glug, 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 glug. So the Caddo is sunk. We'll get two victory points and two experience points for that. I'll keep that to the side yet. So we sank the Caddo. Now the Tudor. The Tudor, we're only attacking with two torpedoes and a gun. We'll roll for the torpedoes first. The torpedoes are going after the Tudor. Again, it's plus one torpedo strength, minus one for range, plus one, plus two for fired, minus one. So we only get a plus one to these rolls. In order to sink the Tudor, we need a nine. So we actually need at least one eight to sink it with torpedoes. Then we'll see if we really need to fire the gun. We'll find out. So, and all these torpedoes, of course, are spent. They're out of there. So two torpedoes at the Tudor. So we roll two dice, and we need at least... Uh, we need at least one eight. We need an eight out of one of these two dice. So fire the two torpedoes at the tutor. Shroom. We got it. That's a 10. That's a 10 plus one is 11. Kaboom. The tutor goes down. We sank that poor ship. And we didn't have to use the gun. Although I although it does say when you declare the attacks, it actually you have to you declare you actually have to declare the attacks. So even though we didn't have to use the gun, we still lose a gun marker because it still counts. Because you when you, you got to declare your attacks, so you know declare all attacks before rolling for any. So now the question is, did the gun hit it? Let's find out if the gun hit it anyway. Um, we can find out if the gun hit it. Uh, the gun, gun skill is zero, okay, minus three per range. So he was one away, so it was a minus three. So in order for the gun to hit it. So uh, the tutor, on a gun hit to the tutor, um, my, uh, minus three, I would have to roll a 10 in order to sink it with the gun. It was a four. We missed it anyway with the gun. So the gun missed. So the gun missed anyway, but the torpedo, but the torpedo sank it. So we sink the tutor, and we get both those ships on this uh, on that contact for U forty four. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So now we go back to the post combat resolution phase. We do add a stress. So now there's five. There is now five stress on the sub. We reload the torpedoes, so we take, uh, let's see, there was, let's see, there are 16, so six go in there, so I'll replace this eight, replace that eight with a two, with a two here for ready torpedoes, and we put six into the ready tubes, and then, of course, we get we get the points. So we get three vic so U44 gets three victory points and gets uh three experience points. Not too bad. And since there are no more and that was the only contact there was in this Z zone, so that means he goes under the search box as he is now done. You think you're getting it, Brian? You think you're getting it? Um, there are some rules I'm not using, not because they're optional or anything like that. Um, it's just that I'm not doing any special missions or such. Maybe the next game, maybe the next campaign here, I'll pro I'll try doing some of that. So there's only one submarine left, and that's U-47 in the North Sea. That's Gunther Prane's ship. So, so and of course, a warning counter, of course, goes into this zone because it was a contact. So now we go into the North Sea for U-47. 
You go to the North Sea now for U-47. So U-47, that's Gunther Prane. He's an infiltrator, and he really, that means he doesn't have to attack from long range. Now, I'm out of convoy cards, so I'm going to have to shuffle here for a moment. So we can go ahead and reshuffle the convoy cards. You always reshuffle them. I probably should have done that at the start. And you can and yes it is possible to come up with the same with the uh, same exact ship uh again. You can't come up with the same exact ship and you know you, you can come up with the same ship again and that's why I and that's why I always call them I call it a class of ship, not the actual name of the ship. So I call it a class because it is possible to see the ship again. All right. Something nasty there. No problem. Let me just make sure I have all the convoy cards. And I think I do. Okay. And the event cards. Yep, we're good there. And we take this one. And so now you reshuffle. Does it play a little different from the other leader games? Gator Leader may have just made your list. Gator Leader plays the exact same way this one does. There's really no difference. I've looked at the rules. The, let's put it this way. Um, the instruction book here. That's in for that's in this book for U-boat leader. I'm going to show you that DVG actually made a mistake. This is U-boat leader. I'm going to go to this page. On this page, you see this card, and that says Zuikaku. Well, that was a Japanese aircraft carrier. That was a Japanese aircraft carrier, and here. On this page here, you can see during escort movement, the submarine chaser CH-30 moves in the same area as Gato to attack. Gato? There's no Gato in this in U-boat leader. So this was actually someone forgot to change a few pages from U-boat, from Gato leader to U-boat leader. And these are second edition rules for U-boat leader. So absolutely, okay. Um, it's pretty much plays the same exact way. It plays the same exact way. The difference between Gato Leader and games like Beneath the Med, The Hunters, The Hunted, and Silent and Silent Victory, in those games you play one submarine on a patrol. Here you play multiple subs on a patrol. You're actually in command of a flotilla in a sub a submarine flotilla, a pack of subs, pretty much. Um. I like both games. I think Silent Victory is awesome. So basically a universal rule book, pretty much. Pretty much. If you get a copy of Gator Leader, you'll you'll like it. You'll like it. And it has a lot it has four big campaigns just like uh U-Boat Leader has and uh, at different stages of the Pacific War. All right, so let's see what U-47 does cuz this is probably going to be the last contacts we have here before we all return these subs to port. So U-47 is in the North Sea, and we're going to see if he finds any contacts. It is an eight, and he does. He finds two contacts in the North Sea. So there are two contacts here. So we find two contacts in the North Sea. So now we got to see what he finds and decide if we want to attack or not. Now, Gunther Prane's U-boat type is, a, is U-47. It's a Type 7B. He only has five ready torpedoes, and only a f and only a few left here. He has torpedo skills, so Gunther Prane's got to be careful. So let's see what he finds. Let's find out what our first convoy card is. And it's a it's a six. It is six ships and three escorts. Now the thing about this, if we go ahead and attack these six guys. All right, if we get in here and attack these guys and we don't finish one off with only two contacts, 
we get a if we have if we don't finish him off, we score at least heavy damage on one. Okay, we can use the last remaining contact to finish it off. But I'm not going to go after three escorts, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to they'll call that off, and we'll choose a second convoy card. So we're going to disavow that convoy, and we'll go to one contact left. And this one is, oh boy, that is six merchants and two escorts. Another big one. Well, let's engage it and let's see what we find. So I'm going to engage it. So a warning, Connor is going to go into the North Sea and there will be a battle location. So let's see what U-47 has. So we've got, we've got a big convoy here. So we got two merchants here. We have two merchants here. We have two merchants here. And one lone merchant here. So a total of six mer a total of oh we got three escorts. My bad. Three escorts. That's not a merchant, that's an escort. That's an escort there. So six merchants. We got one escort with this guy here. And we got an escort up here. And an escort here. All right. Okay. So the escorts are placed. The escorts are placed. So now we got to see... So now we got to see where we want to put him. Now, Gunther Prane is an infiltrator. He can move into, he can come in at short range or medium range if we want to. We got two escorts there, so we got to be careful. And I think in this case, three escorts we got to deal with here. I mean, no more contacts, of course, after this. So three escort ships and six merchants. Uh, what are we going to do? Where do we come in? Well, we're going to come in submerged, obviously. So we're going to come in submerged, and I think I want to go after... I think, you know what, I'm still going to come in at long range. So I'm going to come in at long range. I'm going to let myself go to medium range on the lag. And because we don't know where, because the, the escorts might move somewhere else. So we got to be careful here. So the only, so right, so he's going to still come in at long range in the, in, um, in the uh, convoy, in the convoy wake. So he's still going to come in at long range, U-47. He wouldn't go head to head right into a pack of three escorts and six merchants. I don't think uh, Gunther Brain would do that. Now let's find out what the specials are. Training. Add one light hit to attacks against U-boats. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Add one light hit to attacks against U-boats. That means that every ship just got one extra light hit on, the, on, on a U-boat. So... This becomes even more dangerous. So we might just have to fire and forget. All right, so we're going to move. And so now we go to the combat resolution phase. We're going to move into...
I'm moving at a lag, so I know they're going to come down. I'm going to move here. We're going to move. Actually, no. We're going to move here instead. I may just have to go after one ship and be happy with it. So we're going to move into long range. So he's going to move here. So now, okay, so that's our movement. Now we have the lag. So all these guys come down. So we're actually going to move us into, or do I do it that way? Hold a minute. Hold the phone central. Because if I lag it, they're moving this way. I'll be moving backward. I'll be off of it. So actually, no. You actually want to come in at short range and then come down to medium range. So that's what you want to do here. They are, they're not at detection yet. We get to move first. So I'm going to move. So actually, I'm going to come in at short range and move down. And the lag will move me to medium range. So I'm going to take medium range shots. I keep on forgetting. They're moving this way. So I'm moving down. So if I would stayed here, I would have been off the board and the battle would have been over. So we're going to move into medium range here. After the lag, we do get to find out what we're fighting here. So we get to see which uh, this uh, this merchant is. So this merchant is the Empress of Britain class high speed passenger ship. 40. Oh, it's a troop ship. High speed passenger ship. 42,000 tons. But it's a speed of three. Victory points four. Experience point three. So that is this ship right here. And it's a fast mover. So this is the Empress of Britain. And it takes a lot to sink it. It's a high-speed passenger ship. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a liner. It, it's a liner. It's a, it's a cruise liner is what it is. It's a cruise liner. Um, we are two X's away from these guys. We can find out what this is. So this ship here is the floor is a Flora class small merchant. Oh, let's see here. There's the Flora class small merchant. So this is the Flora. And this ship here is the is the Balmoral Wood medium freighter, Balmoral class medium freighter, and he's worth a victory point. So that's the Balmoral Wood. And let's see where he is. Where is he? So we have the Empress of Brighton, we have the Flora and the Balmoral Wood. We do we're two for one, two, three hexes from this, so we don't know which escort this is. And we're still two away, three to our with Matt Escort. We don't know what these two are or this. So we got uh we have a small merchant, a medium freighter, and a high speed passenger ship. Yes, prize fish there. In order to sink the Empress of Britain, we need 13s in order to hit that thing with torpedoes. And even if I fire all the fish from 2.2 hexes away, I don't know if that is who I would go after. I think I get four victory points if I sink it, but I think I might just go after the other two instead. And could I have a better chance of sinking the Balmoral Wood and the Flora? Maybe doing some damage to those guys, sinking uh, a medium freighter and a small merchant. And I might just let the high-speed passenger ship go. That would probably be more of something I would call in a wolf pack for. So if I had two submarines in the North Sea, I could call for a wolf pack. That would make a difference to sink the Empress of Britain. And the, But I think that Prane would go and just say, you know what? It would, I'm not guaranteed to sink that. I might just be wasting torpedoes and damage it. But I know I have enough to sink the merchant and the freighter and to get my butt out of there with those escorts. So, so now we see if the escorts can detect and move. 
Well, we don't have to worry about detection because we're too far away. Uh, he is submerged, so he's one, two, three, and escorts can only detect the sub if, uh, under submerged if they're two or away, two or less away. One, so one, two, three. So neither of these escorts can detect us. So now we got to see where they move, and that would do to find out. We got to find out where the escorts move. So let's see. So this escort here. The roll is a five. And if the roll is four to seven, the escort in the short range area does not move. So he stays where he's at. That's a one. If the if the die roll is one to three, an escort in the short range area moves one area counterclockwise in the short range area. So he moves here. We still don't know who he is. And this escort, that's a six. If the escort is in one of four convoy areas or a medium range area, the escort moves one area to a randomly determined adjacent short range area. So he can move either here or here. So I'm going to roll a 10 sided. I'm going to roll a 10 uh, one to five here, six to 10 here. He moves here, which is actually good because if he moved here, all right, he. he you know, he could have had a chance to detect later. So the escorts have moved a little bit. And we got a good shot at two uh, freighters to see if we can sink them. I'm not going to go after the Empress of Britain. I don't think I could sink it. I would rather try to get two victory points than fire uh, all five fish, all right, and hit and get and just a, a heavy damage. Now let's see what the targeting solution would be anyway. Gunther Prane has a plus one, has a uh, plus one tor tor torpedo skill here, okay? So let's see what he would be anyway. So for the Empress of Britain, plus the U-Boat TS modifier, which is plus one, minus the range, so it's one, so we're two hexes away, so it's minus one right now. So plus one, zero, minus one. And if we were to fire all five torpedoes at that, if we were to fire all five torpedoes, we get plus five minus one is four. So it would be, so it would be, so plus one minus one, which is zero, and then plus, and then four. It would be four added, I believe. So plus one here. Minus one per range, so it's negative one because you're two X's away, and then you add plus four. So it'd be plus three in order to hit the Empress of Britain. The Empress of Britain would only sink on a 13. So the only way I could sink it with, with throwing all five dice, I'd have to get one zero. I have to get one ten in order to sink it. Uh, the way my the way I roll dice, unfortunately, guys, I don't trust it. So Instead, I think I have a better chance of doing some damage at one of these two. So, so it'll be plus three to hit one. Now, if I throw them all at the Balmora wood, which is got which is or or the flora, I can hit the flora because the flora, the flora is they're both plus one victory, plus one victory point and one experience point. So I think what I do here. As I think I just go after, try to take one ship out and be happy with it. So, so again, we're one, so we're it's the same thing here. So if I fire a spread of five, but I fire maybe three at the Flora and two at the Balmora Wood. So three at the Flora. So it's plus one, minus one, so negative one. And then you fire, and then plus two so it would only be a one added to each die roll against the flora it would be zero against the balmora wood so three dice plus one at the flora two dice at plus zero against the balmora wood because the balmora wood okay is we're only firing two dice against it and he's Plus one, minus minus one, minus two, so negative one, and you fire two, but minus one, okay. 
So it's a zero. So plus one against the flora. Plus one against the flora and zero against the Balmora wood. Or we just try to go after the Empress of Britain and try to sink it. I need 110. Or, or two of the same heavy damage. Tough decision. What would Gunther Prane do? What would he do? I know how he snuck into Scapa Flow to sink the Royal Oak. All right. What do you think, Brian? What do you think? Shall we try to sink the big guy? It's moving faster at a speed of three. That's the only thing is. I wonder if that makes it. I wonder if that makes a, a difference. I wonder if that makes a difference. And I just realized something. Um. Because he's a speed of three, we actually move to long range. Because you have to take, we didn't know this was a range of three until I did the lag. I got to realize, I got to check something here. When do you actually decide to find out what the ships are? Before the lag or after? Let me see something here. Hold the phone. Because if it's before the lag, he could be in medium range. If it's after the lag... He's in long range because this convoy is moving at a speed of three, not two. That is a good question, and it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. And it doesn't say. All it says is that also reveal, all it says a U-boat automatically reveals any unknown ships at a range of zero, one, or two. And then you have the lag movement. So if that's the case, then if I move first and then I, then I find out what these ships are, then the lag movement takes place. So now I'm back in long range. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. Because now at long range, at the Empress of Britain, at the Empress of Britain at long range, now... It's a mine instead of plus three, it's a plus two. I cannot sink it unless I get two um, heavy damage on it. And I have to get, I'd have to get eight. I have to get two eights, two nines, or two tens to sink it. Go big or go home. Yeah, I know, right? So now instead of a plus three, it's a plus two. So I'd have to go. If I throw all five of it, so now it's minus two again. It's now minus, so it's plus one. So minus one, minus two, minus three. If I throw all five, yeah, you know what? I can't sink it from long range. I can't sink it. It'd be very difficult to do so. Yeah, you got to get something with that many ships. I agree. So what we're going to do is we're going to go after the flora. The flora only needs sevens to sink. So I'm going to throw all five torpedoes into the flora and then get the heck out of here. So one, so it is, so it is 
plus one torpedo skill. Okay. Minus one per range. So minus so plus one, zero, minus one, minus two. We throw five torpedoes, which is plus five, minus one is four. So it's a plus two on the flora. So we're going to throw all five torpedoes on it to get sink and then get the heck out of there. So in order to sink it, we need plus two. So it's it, a seven will go ahead and sink it. So we need fives. Any five we get on five dice will do it. We got it. There's the seven. And the floor just went boom. So we sent so we sent all five torpedoes. We got the cheap ship. We got the cheap ship. So we sink the flora. As we sink the small merchant, this one goes good night. And we got him. So we sank the ship. And I think we're happy about that. So we sank it. So we sank it. And so we go ahead, we get it. So we sank a small freighter. The escorts will search frantically for us, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna find us. So they are now alerted. But so the cautious U boats. Give me a moment here to make sure I'm doing it right. If there are still U-boats and ships on the tactical display, repeat the combat resolution phase. If there are no U-boats or ships left on the tactical display, go to the post-combat resolution phase. So, so we go back to the beginning of the combat resolution phase. So we sank one ship. Yep, now we get well, the name like for it deserves to be sunk. That's bad. That's mean. All right, so we go back to uh, contact phase, which is U-boat movement, and we're going to move off. The long range, we're going to get the heck out of there, be happy we sunk a ship, and then move off. Let me just say something. Let me just double check here something on that for movement. A U-boat may exit the tactical display by moving off the display from any long range area. A U-boat with a stress level that makes it unfit must move to exit the tactical display as directly as possible. So we move it off. We, we move off the tactical display. And that's it. The contact, the, the, the battle is over. The battle is over. So we move off and we sink a ship and we're out of there. So now we go to post-combat resolution. So we add a stress. So we now go to two stress. We reload the torpedoes. So we had, we had only three left after firing the five. So three left, and now, so then uh, we go to, so then we record the experience points, so we get, for U-47, we get a victory point for sinking the ship and an experience point for sinking the flora, so he's toast. And that is it. So, and he is now, there are no more contacts left. So he goes into the search box and that will end that segment. And these go back into the end of the box. Okay, so all of the... So all of the submarines have now done have now done a search and now brought contacts. Now we decide if we want to go back to port. Now we want to decide to go back to port and be happy with it. So let's see what we got here. So now we go to the refit segment. First to see if we promote any U-boats. Well, let's see what we got. U-43 has nine victory points, but he's got only six experience points. So. He needs, he's, he's trained as eight, so he doesn't get promoted. 
U44 has a trained of six. He's got four experience points. He doesn't get promoted. Gunther Prains is a trained of seven. He has three experience points. He doesn't get promoted. So there's no U-boat promotion. Patrol limits. A U-boat completes a patrol when you move it back into a port box. Staying in port does not count. So we moved it into a search box. We didn't move it into a port box. So I think what I would have done if I moved it into a search box or a port box here. So let me see what we do here. Stress recover. Uh, let's see here. So each so each sub is still on patrol. So let's see how many victory points we have right now. So right now we have nine plus five is fourteen plus four is eighteen, and we are we are inadequate, which is okay. But when we loop, but when you return your ships back to port, you lose two victory points by doing that, which is normal. It kind of gives the allies a chance to recover. It kind of gives the allies a chance to recover. So the question is, do I want to move back to port or do I want to have anybody out there? And stress recovery. A U-boat can reduce its number of stress points while in port or when it goes to a Ford operating base. However, if there's a cool rating, which U-43 has, he actually gains, he actually gains a, uh, he got to lose a stress. So this five becomes a four. Because the cool rating is what helps him out here for U-43 who's out there. He still has six torpedoes. And U-44 has six torpedoes. And U-47 doesn't. So has only a few torpedoes left. One seventeen. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see what we can do here. Um, U forty three. U forty three. He is actually. I think U-44 may be the one to use here. He's got five stress. U-43 is going to return to port. So his patrol is done. So his patrol is done. So U-44, so U-43 returns to port and his patrol is done. So nine victory points from him. And he had four stress. U-47, Gunther Prane, he's going to return to port. Because he only has three torpedoes left. So he's going to return to port. He has two stress. And he has four victory points from him. So the question is, do I want U-44 to try to go after one more patrol out there? Uh, why not? Let's see. If, let, we're going to have U-44 stay out there. So these patrols are done for these two subs. So they're finished for their patrols. So they're done. So U-44, however, is going to stay out there for another turn. Uh, in the British Isles. The only problem, he's got five stress. So he's got to, hopefully, but I may move him, is what I may do. I may move him into the North Sea, is what I may do. So he's going to stay in searched, and that means we go back to the strategic segment. No special option points. We're going to go ahead and move the U-boats. So U-44 is going to move from the British Isles into the North Sea, which means he, move, he only gets one event card. So he's going to move into the North Sea, and we'll see what the event card is. 
Stormy weather and U-boats movement for the step. Well, that's what he was going to do anyway. So he's since there and there. So he's in the North Sea. All right. Now we go to the tactical segment. Now we got to see if he finds anybody. Got to see if he finds anybody. So U-44, this will decide if he's going to do anything here. So we roll in the contacts for North Sea. We roll a seven. There are two contacts here. So there are two contacts in the North Sea. So two contacts. So we got to find out what they are and to see if he wants to go after them. So we draw the first contact. So we reduce the one contact by one. And we get four merchants and an escort. And I think that's good. I think we'll take it. So... Four merchants and an escort. And a warning marker goes into here because there's going to be a contact. So four merchants and an escort is what he's got. Okay. Sorry that I repeat myself, guys. I'm still, I say, I guess, because I'm trying to understand what I'm doing here. No DRM for weather. No, 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 def, no, no weather in this case. No weather, no DRM for weather. No, just it stops the movement for stormy weather. So there was no uh, defensive roll modif uh, die roll modifier for weather, at least in the, on that event card. So we have the, so we have four merchant ships and one escort. We got to see what they are, of course. And he's going to come in submerged. And he is going to come in. I think he's going to come in here. I think he's going to come in there. So let's hopefully we don't get detected. Because if I come down here, all right, with only a one, it's not going to be good. So, all right. So that's what we got there. So we're there. Now we got to draw another convoy car to see what the special effect's going to be. Add one to torpedo die rolls. Oh, that's good. So we're adding one to torpedo die rolls. So we got very good torpedo firing solutions. So let's see what we get. All right. So now we go to the combat resolution phase. We're going to move the U-boat. And I'm going to move him into... Going to move them into here. And lag will bring me here. So I'm going to move them into here to come into here for lag to have a chance at whatever these two are. We do, however, do get to find out what these are first before, okay, we have the lag movement. So let's first find out what we got. First, this guy is a Clan Ogilvy bulk carrier, 6,000 ton class. Bolt carrier. That's a Clan Ogilvy. So Clan Ogilvy bolt carrier. We are two from here. Let's find out what this merchant is. And that's the Robin Moore class medium freighter. So, so far, not much in victory points there. And now we find out what the escort is. And the escort is the is a Bedfordshire anti-submarine warfare trawler. The HMS Bedfordshire is a trawler, Bedfordshire trawler class, Bedfordshire class trawler. And and he's he's a trawler, doesn't high have high detect. So so that's the escort. So it's a bed it's the Bedfordshire. Bedfordshire. So that's what we're facing there. Okay. All right. So now we know what we're facing. So now we have, so we already had the movement. 
So now we have the lag movement. So they're moving two. I'm moving one. So we move one space farther down, and I'm going to move into here. So I'm going to have a shot on these two, okay? However, we are in detection range of the Bedfordshire, so he's going to get a chance to detect us. So we have the lag. Now the escorts detect. So we got to see if the Bedfordshire finds us. So an escort checks the detection of U-boats before it moves. An escort checks a surface U-boat at range 0, 1, or 2, and against a submerged U-boat at a range of 0 or 1. Awesome. So we're still so only at a 0 or 1, he can detect us. So we can't detect us from here. So we don't have to worry about the escort. So no detections. Now we got to see if it moves. That's a 1, and it moved. It moves one area counterclockwise. So actually, it moved here. So it actually moved closer to us, but the detection is already done. So it does not detect us. Detection is done first before the escort moves. That is a very important rule. So if the, if the escort doesn't get a chance, doesn't detect you before it moves, you don't have to worry about detection on this turn until the next time. Now we get to attack. Now we get to attack. We are submerged, so we, we're, we're not aggressive. So we have to, the enemy has to go first, but we're not detected by anybody. So we get a chance at these two merchants. We have six torpedoes that we can fire. And I think we fire, they're both, they're both kind of hard to hit. They're both kind of hard to hit. The torpedoes on the Robin Moore, we need a nine to hit it. And Clan Ogilvy, we need tens to hit it. We do better against gun. The Clan Ogilvy is a little larger. But it's also worth one victory point and one experience point. So let's see what we get for attack. So his torpedo skill is plus one. We're might we're one range away. We're one we're one range away, so it's so it's zero. And if we fire three, it's plus two. But we get add one to torpedo die rolls. For torpedo die roll. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fire three and three. And hopefully we might be able to sink, bo sink both. So I'm going to fire three and three. So three at Clan Ogilvy and three at Robin Moore. Because we have the torpedo firing solutions and add one, I think we got a good chance to maybe at least sink one of these things. Maybe both. So let's take our chances, shall we? You got to take risks. So let's try and see if we can do it. So our first shot's going to be against Clan Ogilvy. So he gets a plus one uh, torpedo solution. Minus one for the range, so it's zero. We're going to fire three at the Ogilvy, so it's plus three minus one is two. So that's plus two. That's plus two to the each die roll, and we add one to the torpedo die rolls, so it's going to be a plus three. So a plus three on the Clan Ogilvy, and a plus three on the Robin Moore. To sink the Ogilvy, we need sevens. To sink the Moor, we need sixes. We'll fire on the Moor first. Firing on the Robin Moor. Fire one, two, and three. We got it. The four becomes a seven. The seven becomes a ten, but the nine does it in. So we fire three at Robin Moore, and that will go ahead and sink it. Boom! The Robin Moore goes bye-bye. So we sink that ship. Now we fire three at Clan Ogilvy. It's the same thing, so it's plus three on the Ogilvy. We need a sevens to sink it. Seven, sevens to sink. Fours to do heavy damage. But if we can get two fours, we sink it. We need sevens to sink the Ogilvy. Fire tubes four, five, and six. <sighs> ah! That's terrible. One, two, and three. So. 
one, two, and three. So this three, you add three to that becomes a six, and we do only light damage to the Clan Ogilvy. So the Clan Ogilvy has light damage. So it took one light damage from the torpedo spread. So we sank one, but we couldn't, but we did light damage to the other one, but that does slow down the Clan Ogilvy. So his speed is now down to one. His speed is down to one. Well, now he's alerted. So now there's an alerted marker that goes out there. So now the submarine is alert. Now he's alerted. So now it gets a plus one to detect on this sub. He's alerted that there is a sub in the area because one of his ships that he was escorting just got blown out from under him. And that is our attack. Now we go back to the combat resolute to the start of the combat resolution phase. So we got to do some movement, and we have definitely an angry escort now looking for us. So let's see what we do here. We're still submerged, and we're going to stay submerged. All right, so it's U-boat movement time. Well, he's hurt, so his speed was reduced to one. So he's going to lag down himself during lag. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to move back one here. I'm going to move back, all right, because I want to be able to get out of here, even though we did sink a ship, which is good. All right, so we sank the ship. So that's our movement. And we are now, we're now, um, and the thing was, is when I lagged in, I forgot to find out what these two were. We can find out what this, this one here is the Clan Menzies, and that's a medium freighter. Find out what this one was. We didn't check that one as soon as we found out what that was. So that's a Clan Menzies, medium freighter. And this one here is the Harry G. Seidel large tanker, large tanker class. So Harry G. Seidel large tank, uh, Harry G. Seidel class large tanker, and he's worth um, uh, he's worth uh, pretty good there. He's worth about two victory points. Well, we already got one. So let me find the uh, other one. Here it is. Okay. So now, so we've moved back. So now we go lag. So we move back. Now we have the lag movement. If the ship's U-boat speed is one lower than the reference ship, move it one area closer to the convoy wake area on the tactical display. So what happens is we now move to medium range, but the Clan Ogilvy now moves into here because these ships are faster than the Clan Ogilvy. So I don't think it moves into short range. I don't think it does. Let me see here. No, it doesn't. It just moves one down into this convoy area. So we're still, we're two hexes away, two spaces away from the Clan Ogilvy. And by doing that, now he still has to try to find us. He's alerted, though, but we're three hexes away from him. We're still submerged. So let's see how that works now. Now, each escort now detects and moves. You may have them in any order. Perform the detection of movement for one escort for the next. So let me see something here. Each alerted counter improves the escort's range and die rolls that detect U-boats by one. Escorts can only attack detected U-boats. So what this does now is by... so. So now, so we moved our lag. Now the escorts get the chance to detect. 
Well, the escort, okay, can only attack can only detect us a submerged U-boat, a submerged U-boat at a range of one. But when it's alerted, it becomes a range of two. But we're still, but we're three hexes away from him. So he cannot detect us. He's still, he can't find us. He knows the ship got blown out from under him, but he can't find us. And that was, of course, all of our, um, that was, of course, all of our, um, all of our torpedoes we used there. So I have no more torpedoes ready. Okay. But we'll see, but I might get the final shot. So we'll see what happens with this. So he can't find us. I'm not going to surface because that would be stupid. Of course, I could go after the escort, but I don't think we'll do that here. I'm running, getting a little low on time. So, so he can't detect us, but he does move. So let's see where he moves to. That's a 10. And escort in the short range area moves one area clockwise in the short range area. So he moves here. So we don't have to worry about him. At the moment, he moved up that way. He's trying to find us, but he doesn't know where he's at, where we're at. Okay, so now we go to aggressive U-boats, which we are not. We go to the enemy; they're not attacking, and we have a chance to attack. But I have no ready torpedoes. I was hoping that torpedo spread would sink both ships. So that means that we go back to the movement section, since I'm not going to be able to attack. We still lag, so let's see what we want to do here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and move off. I want to see something about final shot. Can I get a final shot if one or more ships ended with a heavy damage counter? You could use to reattack any one of those ships instead of reattacking the convoy. Nope, I only got light damage on the Clan Oglavy, so it does not matter. So. We're going to move into, we're going to get out of here. So we're going to be long range. We'll move one long range. We're going to stay down. And lag is going to move the clan Oglavi down here. Okay. But it's going to move us off the long range. So we are out. We're done. So we sank one ship and we did light damage to another. I'll take it. I'll take it. So now, yep, don't get greedy. I hear you. So now we go to the, so now we add stress. So now he goes to six stress. We reload the torpedoes. So we've got two, we got five torpedoes stored. So the five be, go into ready. We get an experience point for sinking the ship. So we get one victory point and one experience point for U-44. So a victory point and an experience point, which is not bad. Action decision. Do nothing. Remove all the counters in the tactical display. Place the U-boat counter in the search box of the campaign map area it is. Return to the contact phase, which you're not going to do. And what we're going to do is instead of moving into the search box, uh, U4, well, instead of moving to the search box, U44 is going to return to port and end the patrol. And that is it. The patrols are over. Now we go. So the patrols are over. So all submarines return back to patrol. This is a short patrol. So there's no need to go through any. We've just really now. It's the last. It's a last it's a, the patrols are over for this uh, battle begins. And I'll probably play another one of these, the battle begins, another short patrol after another uh, Tiger Leader campaign. So, so let's see what we have here. So we go to the refit segment. Uh, no U-boats are getting promoted. The patrol limits are done. Stress recovery doesn't matter because the campaign is over. So now we go to the campaign outcome. 
So when the last U-boat in play returns to port and reaches its patrol limit or is sunk, the campaign is completed. So let's see what we got here. So U-44 got six. So add up your victory points and compare your total to the numbers listed on the victory point table of the campaign sheet. This shows you the result of your campaign. So we had nine. So we have nine plus six. Nine plus six is 15 plus four is 19. So we're at, so we're at 19 total victory points for the three subs. So we're at 19 right here. So 19. Just going to write it here at 19. Now each turn with no U-boats at sea, that's zero. That's minus two victory points. So this was only one turn where no point, point, points at C. So it's minus, it becomes 17. Because there's a turn where no U-boats are at C. So it's 17. No U-boats were sunk. So the total campaign is 17 victory points. And we look here and we get adequate, which is fine. I mean, for the first time me playing this game, I'll take adequate. The guy would come to me and said, you did a, you did your job. Thank you very much. Take some rest and then get back out there and do some more. So that is it for this campaign. The battle begins. We'll probably replay it again. Only this time I might add a fourth sub and have four subs go out there again and maybe choose some missions. And I think missions would have made a difference. I think a mission uh, would probably do a difference here. So... Not bad. 19, I'll take it with three subs. And, of course, I did kind of mess up the rules a little bit. But I know we got it. I know we got it. Like I go. I know I think we got it uh, good this time. So not too bad. Three submarines. We sank. Uh, we got 17 victory points. We sank a good amount of ships. I mean, we sank a good amount of freighters. And, uh, no, not too bad. I'll take it. I like this game. This game is great. I think Gato Leader would be even more fun because I'd actually, I think I'd be more at home playing the American submarines against uh, Japanese shipping. But this game is good. This is a fun game to play. So, and we'll play more of it. So that will do it for U-Boat Leader, uh, the next World War II leader. We go back to Poland uh, for Tiger Leader. We're going to do another Tiger Leader uh, Poland campaign. This is going to be Poland uh, Mokra 1939. We'll stay in the year 1939, I got to set up a Tiger Leader uh, campaign now for Poland, Mokra 1939. So we're going to go back to Poland and continue World War II leader. And we'll uh, give that game another crack at it and see how well we do this time uh, in, uh, in against the Poles as we continue uh, the start of World War II here. Don't forget, we got two weeks left before 1981 baseball begins. So... I know it's like I know everybody is waiting for that to start. And I understand a lot of people are not I'm not getting a lot of views for the World War II or my Arkhamar. I understand if it's not your cup of tea. I just thank you very much for anybody who does watch and for anybody who would be interested in the games. So thank you very much. But there are we are in the countdown, two weeks left before we have opening day, inside pitch 1981. And I know everyone's waiting for uh, that to start. Cause that's all I'm getting, but that's okay. Brian Patterson, Tony's board life, Mark Russell and Steeler fan. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, please leave a like on your way off on your way out of the ocean. Uh, make sure please subscribe if you have not done so and make sure you hit the bell. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart, stay strong. And we'll see you guys next time for some more world war two leader. We're going back to tiger leader for another campaign in Poland. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.